The topic is to talk about how renewable uh, energy and renewable fuels can make sure that we can decarbonize our transport sector and also make sure that we at the same time do not hamper the production of food in Europe. We need renewable fuels, so that we also need the first generation of renewable fuels, uh, that we, if we really want to decarbonize, this will be one out of many ways that we will de decarbonize our transports. We will also electrify our cars, we will use renewable for uh, some kind of transport and not for others in the future but for a start off it's super important that we have renewable fuels. We say that a good starting point is to say that biofuels is, is a complex and multifaceted topic and therefore one should avoid uh, oversimplification and uh, sweeping statements because uh, the assessment of uh, the sustainability of biofuels is context specific, it's really based, it depends on the local circumstances. Now we have a new proposal, which has been adopted by the EU in December, which is asking no further contribution, I think, to the, to the farm sector for the decarb decarbonization, I think, of, uh, of the EU, and in particular, I think, of, the, uh, of transport, uh, for the better sustainability, I think, of the supply of raw material, and also in terms of diversification of sources of supply. And for this, this proposal, basically, at least in, uh, in particular for agriculture and the CAP, this proposal um, aims at reducing, I think, the, uh, the role, I think, of uh, conventional biofuel and at increasing, I think, the role and the percentage, I think, attributed and used, I think, by so advanced, what we call advanced biofuel, the second generation biofuel. When we go seriously and we go through the concrete impact on biofuels, we see that uh, biofuels are uh, actually a good thing and a good news uh, for food in Europe because they generate feed, where we and we need a lot of feed in Europe because we are rely, uh, we depend uh, highly from imports. Uh, in terms of uh, decarbonization as well, uh, and in terms of economy growth and our agriculture needs growth and and uh, and good news today and clearly biofuels and first generation biofuels are a good news. Bioenergy is something that a lot of people think is a green energy because the word bio is in front of it but actually it is uh, emitting the same amount of emissions as uh, as regular uh, petrol and diesel therefore what we need to make sure is that the types of bioenergy that are coming on the market are actually worth the name bioenergy and are actually reducing emissions. So the Renewable Energy Directive is a climate policy, it's not a farming policy, it's not an employment policy. It should be uh, ensuring that we are actually saving, uh, saving emissions. And uh, it will be that uh, first generation biofuels have been delaying instead of um, uh, making the uh, emission reductions uh, go faster. So we have been delaying certain other technologies to come on the market. So uh, we are asking for uh, the land-based biofuels to be phased out by 2030. We can definitely produce uh, very sustainable biofuels from crops that has a very very high greenhouse gas saving rate. Uh, for example, our production it saves about uh, or at least 90 percent of uh, of CO2 emissions, and it's very sustainable. It's even better than second generation biofuels. This is about jobs. This is about employment. This is about making sure that uh, we are not doing this for the for the for the climate, not doing this for the uh, environment, but also for the people. That we can avoid urbanization, that we can really make jobs happen, that we can make social development happen, not only in Europe, but especially important is this in, in Southern uh, Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia and Latin America. That's where the population is growing.